In the last video, we talked about three types of simple rational functions. The first type, the most basic, f of x equals some number a divided by x. That's something like f of x equals 3 over x, just something really basic. You can graph that. Um, the next one, the more slightly more complicated one, is something like f of x equals some number 3 over x minus a, not h, let's put a number there instead, x minus... 2 plus k is another number, plus 5. That's the second example. And the third one, most complicated, f of x equals ax plus c over bx plus c. So that's something like f of x equals 2x plus 5 over negative 1x minus 2. Something like this, where there's an x on the top and on the bottom. That's how you know it's this third type. So those are the three we talked about yesterday. We have to expand this a little bit um, because there's one more type that 8.3 focuses on, and it's something like this. f of x equals some polynomial p of x, something with x in it, and over some polynomial q of x. That's the fourth type that we're going to talk about today. An example of that might be something something crazy like this. y equals x squared plus 3x minus 4 over x minus 2. So when you see something like this, you know it's a rational function because it's something divided by something else. And when you think about the three types we looked at yesterday, it doesn't actually fit into those, any of those three because this one's just a number divided by x. This one's the a, h, and k business. And this one's just an x over x. But this new type has x squared and normal x. It's just all over the place. So we're going to talk about these types today, um, starting with a few examples. Now, you already know at this point, it's no real secret that you can plug all this stuff into your calculator and probably get to the right answer. However, it's not going to be that reliable in order to find the zeros, the asymptotes, and things like that, just because the calculator is not that good for this stuff. I mean, it'll work but it's, it's easier and probably faster to just do it by hand. Now there are three things you need to know about this equation. The first thing is that the x-intercepts, so whatever the x-intercepts are, are the zeros of p of x. So what you do is you set the top part of this equal to zero, calculate the zeros, graph the zeros for the top part, the p of x, those are the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts are the zeros of the top. Second thing you need to know is this graph has a vertical asymptote. That's a line that runs straight up and down. Has a vertical asymptote at each zero of q of x. What that means is, if you want to find where the vertical asymptote is, there might be more than one, you set the q of x equal to zero, solve for zero, factor it, graph it, whatever you need to do to find out what that is, those are going to be your vertical asymptotes. y equals 6 divided by x squared plus 1. So as soon as you look at this, you know it has to be this fourth type that we're talking about in 8.3. It can't be one of the three types we talked about in 8.2 because it has an x squared term. And none of those three had an x squared. So just by looking at this, of course we can graph it with the calculator, and that's going to give us lots of useful information. We can find out that same information using this. It says the x-intercepts of this graph are the zeros of p of x. So remember, p of x is the top. Um, there's no x term on the top, which means there's no x-intercepts. We can't set 6 equal to 0 and solve. That just doesn't work. There are no x-intercepts. So for this, I'm just going to put no x-intercepts. Um, it says the vertical asymptote at each 0 of q of x. So we look at the bottom, and we're looking for the vertical asymptote. We're going to set that equal to 0. x squared equals negative 1. That's going to give us some imaginary number. 
So because there's no real zeros, it's some imaginary number, there's no vertical asymptote. Let's go ahead and graph it just to confirm what we have. So we have 6 divided by x squared plus 1. We predicted that there would be no x-intercepts, um, which looks to be true. It looks like it'll get close to the x-axis, but it will never cross it. There's actually horizontal intercept or horizontal asymptote there. There's no vertical asymptote. There's no line running up and down that it will not cross. Let's take a look at another example, 2x squared over x squared minus 9. Remember, the x-intercepts are the zeros of p of x, so we're going to set the top equal to 0 to find the x-intercepts. Um, x squared equals 0. Take the square root, so x is 0. That means there's one x-intercept at 0. Then we're going to find the vertical asymptote at each zero of q of x. So we're going to set the bottom, q of x, equals zero. x squared equals three. Uh, I'm sorry, x squared equals nine. And x equals plus or minus three. So there are two vertical asymptotes. There's one at plus three and one at minus three. So let's go ahead and graph it and check what we already have. So we have two x squared divided by x squared minus 9. And it gives us this really strange picture like this. Let's go ahead and just make sure it's what we expect. There's one x-intercept at 0. We can see right here there's that x-intercept at x equals 0. There's two vertical asymptotes at, um, like we showed, plus 3 and minus 3. Here's one vertical asymptote at minus 3. Here's one at plus 3. Um, these lines on the graph that run from top to bottom, those are not part of the graph. The calculator is just trying to connect these branches that don't actually touch. But these are actually vertical asymptotes. The graph will never cross these lines at negative 3 and plus 3. There's one more critical part we need to talk about. We already know how to find the zeros. Remember, that's looking at the top, p of x. We already know how to find the vertical asymptote. That's looking at the bottom, q of x. But now you need to know how to find the horizontal asymptote, if there is one. So all you do is you need to evaluate what's the degree on the top versus what's the degree on the bottom. Remember, degree is the highest exponent. That's the degree. So you have three choices. If the top degree is less than the bottom degree, so like the top would be 1, the bottom would be 5. Then there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Or the degrees are equal, like in this situation, the degree of 2 and degree of 2, it's equal. So in order to find the horizontal asymptote, you divide the coefficients. Um, so we're going to divide the 2 and this 1. So we have 2 over 1. There's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. Or there's a third situation where the bottom degree is larger than the, or sorry, where the top degree is larger than the bottom degree, and in that situation, there's no horizontal asymptote. 